What would happen to the UK's weather if a major volcanic eruption occurred elsewhere on the planet? One way of answering this question is to look back at what's happened in the past. In April 1815, the volcano Mount Tambora on the island of Sumbawa in Indonesia erupted. It was the most violent volcanic eruption in recorded human history. On Sumbawa and neighboring islands, tens of thousands of lives were lost, either directly from the eruption or during the following months from starvation and disease. Indirectly, the impacts from Tambora's eruption were far-reaching around the globe, from air temperature to weather patterns, and from food supplies to literature and art. Why did Tambora have such a big effect on the weather around the world, and what would happen if a similar eruption occurred today? As Mount Tambora was erupting in Indonesia, Europe was in the midst of the Little Ice Age, a loosely defined period of cooling characterized by snowy winters, wet summers, and poor harvests. But it was about to turn even colder. Tambora's explosive eruption sent 140 billion tons of ash into the atmosphere, along with tens of millions of tons of sulfur dioxide. This sulfur dioxide entered the stratosphere, circled the world and, within weeks, reacted with oxygen and water vapor to form sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid condenses into tiny droplets known as sulfate aerosols, which can then remain in the stratosphere. 10 to 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface for a few years before settling back to Earth. These aerosols block some of the sun's radiation and have a cooling effect on the planet. The huge quantities of sulfur dioxide released into the stratosphere by Tambora caused such a cooling effect that 1816, the year following the eruption, has become known as the year without a summer. Cooling in many parts of the world can be pieced together using clues from the natural world, such as ice cores, tree rings, and coral. The Berkeley Earth Surface Temperature data set found that the land temperature in the Northern Hemisphere in 1816 cooled by 1.4 Celsius. Much of Europe, especially Central Europe, had a particularly cold and wet summer. This wasn't entirely the fault of Tambora, it has also been blamed on a change in weather patterns as well as low solar activity. But combined with the impact of the Napoleonic Wars, mass unemployment and food shortages, the poor weather could not have come at a worse time. It was a time of severe hardship, but also innovation. High prices for horse fodder resulted in many starving horses, inspiring Carl Dreyas to invent a walking machine similar to today's balance bikes. In 1816, British writer Mary Shelley spent the summer on the shores of Lake Geneva, along with Lord Byron and a few other famous authors. She wrote, It proved a wet, ungenial summer and incessant rain often confined us for days to the house. They amused themselves by setting a challenge to each write a ghost story. Mary's contribution was Frankenstein. Of course, we'll never know whether it was Geneva's thunderstorms that sparked Mary Shelley's imagination, or if there were some other sources of inspiration. English romantic painter William Turner was inspired by the effects of Tambora. Although he won't have known about the eruption, some of his paintings were said to have been influenced by 1816's volcanic skies. The same sulfate aerosols that dim incoming sunlight can have spectacular effects on sunrises and sunsets by scattering even more red light than normal. Later, in the 19th century, there was another devastating volcanic eruption in Indonesia, Krakatoa. Paintings published by the Royal Society show the afterglow of Krakatoa's blast on the other side of the world in Chelsea, London. Stranger optical effects can occur when ash fills the sky. In 1883, following Krakatoa's eruption, people started seeing blue moons because of a filter effect from particles of ash measuring one millionth of a metre across. Now, ash this size doesn't hang around in the atmosphere for long, just like the aerosols, it quickly settles to the ground, which means that any cooling effect from volcanoes is short-lived. And volcanoes don't just have a cooling effect on the Earth. 
On January the 15th, 2022, the submarine volcano Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai erupted in the South Pacific. By erupting underwater, this volcano released fewer cooling aerosol and ash particles and instead an unprecedented amount of water vapor, much of this straight into the stratosphere. Research is ongoing into how this abrupt increase in stratospheric water content has affected and will continue to affect weather patterns around the world. But volcanoes also erupt greenhouse gases and these hang around in the atmosphere for longer than ash, dust, aerosols and excess water vapour. In the distant past, particularly active volcanic periods have had a long-term impact on global climate. More recently, we've been able to measure the contribution of volcanoes to greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The largest eruption of the last 50 years, Mount Pinatubu in 1991, belched out 42 million tonnes of CO2. But in the same year, human emissions of CO2 amounted to 23 billion tonnes, or more than 500 Pinatubus. Thankfully, volcanoes as big as Pinatubu, Krakatoa and Tambora are not a regular occurrence. If a Tambora-sized eruption occurred today, its cooling effect might be noticeable but also relatively short-lived. Any warming effect from its greenhouse gas emissions, however, would now be dwarfed by the long-term impacts we ourselves are having on the global climate.